What are some Asian traditions that you've decided to let die with you? What an interesting question. What a dramatic phrasing. Uh, we're talking about a viral Reddit thread today from Asian American Reddit. Long story short, you know, these are some things that people were very unhappy with that happened to them as a child, and they want to let these traditions die with them. Joining us today to discuss is a social media consultant, influencer. What else? Nelson Young. Appreciate you guys having me on the show. I This is a very triggering subject, but I'm ready. Yeah, I mean, long story short, it was written by a Bengali American. Uh, it's, uh, it was a girl, I believe. She was born to Bengali and Indian parents. And she says, the number one thing I'm going to let die is comparing my kids' achievements to other kids. Growing up, my mom was in a contest with other New Jersey Indian moms basically to see whose kids were achieving the most. It was so toxic. It was so hard. It's ruined our relationships. And guess what? I still feel some type of way about it in my 30s. Wow, all right, so everybody uh, actually in the comment section gave their things that they want to let die, as in things they don't like about traditional Asian culture that they will not carry on. This is not a positive list, this is indeed a list of things that they don't like, but once, one thing that they probably will like is Smala Sauce, nice. our very own finishing oil. Sichuan truffle made in America. Check it out on the Instagram uh, right now at Smala Sauce. But yeah, everybody, please hit that like button as we go through this. And hopefully you can also comment down below some other aspects of Asian culture that you don't like. Let's be clear here, though. This girl did say that she ended up going to an Ivy League school to appease her mom. Her mom was able to defeat all the other New Jersey Indian moms, but she clearly is very unhappy about it. Do you see this? Kids who, oh. who did it and achieved the, you know, the accolade yeah, or the achievement that their high expectation parent has, but they're like still like very bent out of shape and no, resentful of it. 100%. I mean, I think, you know, I, I just think that there's just so much pressure, especially from immigrant parents. You know, they want a better lives for their kids and they have themselves. It's a lot of pressure. And I think in that spirit of comparison, you know, it's it's just bad news, you know, either way. I don't, I just think that's super No, no I think to defend the parents, they were going to be like, well, you see the results? You got the yeah, results? Yeah, it happens often. We got, She's like, you, I'm quite, uh, I would take the outcome. It's, uh, but that's, that's I'm some sorry, form but of gaslighting. I had to do it again, I would of, do it again. Know, <laughs> I believe that, no, yeah. I believe that. No, so you're saying that you would think that her Indian mom will accept this strained relationship because she won the game of what her, Yeah, but- Yep. It seems like the daughter is very, do you think that, I wonder if the, the, the truth is the daughter would go and be the state school kid and pass the Ivy League accolade on to somebody else though. Well, seems like you've won, but at what cost? <laughs> yeah, so I guess it kind of <laughs> right. comes down to, uh, are the parents, this is a really funny question, are the parents willing to take the result over having a good relationship with their kid long term? Um, I think it varies parent per parent, right? Yeah, like, Man, but, that's but, crazy. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you this. If you were one of the hardcore Ivy League parents where it's like the parents were, they, they just drove you out of the most unlikeliest probabilities to that level, I think they will take it because they got the I, outcome. I think so. You know, I think it's, you know, the, the ends justify the means. I think, and that's a very, very typical mindset. Mm. But I don't think it's right because I think that that's still layered in years of trauma you know, and, and that kind of stuff takes a while to unravel. All right, so real quick, before we go in the comment section, because there are a lot of things that people would let die, even down to like Confucianism and Taoism. Anyways, what are some things real quick that you would let die that you're not gonna raise your kid with? Let's go. Go for it. I would say probably buying really low quality items. You know, mm. I mean, sometimes dollar store items. I know dollar stores like barely even exist in society anymore, but I think there's like, you know, there's what you, the Amazon, right? Just so get, get like, just, you know, there's good cheap items on Amazon that are highly rated that have been verified by thousands and thousands of purchases. Stop buying horribly cheap, horribly made cheap items and just go one notch up, still find an affordable item, but way better quality. But how about this one guys? And I think we could all agree with this despite our own personal interests and skin in the game, valuing the sons over the daughters. Oh yeah, yeah. I hate that. That's that is not, that's that's not the worst, that's the worst, it's, man. It's, it's perpetuating, you know, that misogyny, it's, it's no yeah. good. Yeah, no, I mean, when I heard my, that our oldest sister kind of felt that growing up, yeah. when I grew up, I felt really bad because I had no idea really that that was happening because right. it was, it wasn't, our family wasn't the worst at it, but they did it a little bit. Yeah, and yeah so, I yeah. believe that. I mean, I'm, I have two sisters. I'm the middle child. You know, sometimes I could feel that pressure, but sometimes I could feel that, yeah. um, that slight advantage or I feel I could feel that preferential treatment heavy weighs the prince <laughs> no, I, I mean a little bit of right no, I and, mean and but it, it's not it's not good when you get older 
you it can strain the relationship at least for a while between you and your and sisters. your sisters yeah, yeah. for no reason it, and you're yeah. just like i don't know what i did right yeah but yeah. it depends on how tapped they yeah. are into like the family life you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. you know some people's gaze is like very family centric yeah. but other people's uh, gaze is more into the yeah. american pop cultural society uh hoarding things wrapping your remote whack of course obviously right. nowadays do you think that sometimes asian americans like they should mix and match right realistically they should Got mix to. and match things and I think you it's mean, important to identify yeah, what you want to let die. And it's important. practical. But I think, you know, that's what I was, you know, bringing up. I just think that, men, I'm really curious about the origins of that mentality of like preserving stuff, whether that is not even taking off the wrapper off your, your TV and you've had that TV for five years or, you know, keeping your couch covered or, you know, um, wrapping your remote and saran wrap. Like, where's that mentality? I don't know. Maybe from? maybe it goes back to preserving vegetables, I just think, man. I'm just I saying we eat a lot of preserved veggies. I mean, I believe that too, but I just think you just got to use it. Enjoy it. Like, mm. these are these are just material possessions, right? Right. Sort of like the nice glassware that sits up in the cupboard for a special occasion right. that, that'll never yeah. come, right? Yeah, or that bottle of, you know, XO or something like that that's... You know, they, they, you know, end up breaking out every couple of years. But yeah, I think it's important. Uh, let's get into the comment section so we can see. And then we'll also talk about some other things that maybe we should keep. But uh, these are things that people want to get rid of. Somebody said, I stopped encouraging my kids by belittling them because they felt like obviously being Asian, there's a lot of negative reinforcement to uh, get certain behavioral yeah, outcomes yeah, from tough the kids. love. Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't you say your sister is like a psychologist, right? Yeah, she is. She would not encourage typical negative reinforcement no, Asian parenting, no, right? I highly doubt that. Basically, is modern American psychology basically against almost like 80% of the way that like Man, Asian parents raise their kids? Your next pod needs to have like a clinical like family psychologist. In yeah, your, like an Asian one that got, they got raised the old school way but oh, yeah. learned the new school way. Oh, yeah. Um, somebody said Confucianism and Taoism. I'm too American for that, and it is an improper system for the modern world. <laughs> I thought this one was hilarious. I mean, I think to chuck everything from Confucianism and Taoism, I think you can pick and choose whatever fits your life, but you're not wrong. If you feel like that Confucianism does not work in your life in the Western world in America, then yeah, Dude, you have, it's I, your choice. I always tell people, man, a lot of people, they try to rank puzzle pieces. Is puzzle piece D better than puzzle piece E? Mm. They're just, it's about fit, man. Yeah. Do the puzzle pieces fit? It's not really about but, like but, yeah. ranking the puzzle pieces because they're all important to the making oh, the yeah. puzzle. But does the undertone of Confucianism and Taoism kind of also make us who we are as Asians? That's part of it too. Yeah, I, I think so. For yeah. all the pros and cons, to be honest, probably as the economically on a macro level, median statistics have been good, but also getting picked on probably in, in perpetuity socially. Um, somebody said, my husband and I didn't do a tea ceremony. My family didn't receive a dowry. The groom's family didn't pay for the wedding. What do you guys think about doing away with all these, you know, dowry, imp yeah. old things from the, the, the 500 years ago? I think every marriage and every, every relationship is a bit different. I think communicating those things is really important. Some, you know, some families might value those traditions a lot more than others. So I think it's just worthwhile to just be respectful and have those conversations. And are you doing the dowry? No, um, the age hierarchy. My mom is black and my dad is Chinese and both cultures have that exact age thing. They basically both raised me to believe that elder means automatically smarter and more respectable. I'm stomping that out quick. You're more respectable when you're more respectable, not because you're older. Like okay, that. now I think a lot of people use the age thing because it's simple and easy and obviously plays into the older, the elders system, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're raising your kids, how do they know that you're respectful? as a parent and that they have to respect you because it's not about the age and power know. thing, right? It might be actions speak louder than the words in that situation. All right. Yeah, I would say it obviously it depends. Like you should be have a minimum baseline respect, but you don't need to provide extreme respect to people just because they're older if they don't haven't earned or they're not acting in a respectable manner themselves, right. especially it's, uh, America's a very variable society. But then this person's going to have to really teach their kid on how to read respectability. Mm, they're yeah. going to have to be able to see it. So that's uh, complicated, but yeah, I can agree. Yeah, nuanced reads are always better, but like you said, you need more apparatus and way more coaching and fucking uh, some capacities. Yeah. Somebody said, if I ever had children, I'm not going to force them to follow a path in life. That just makes them not want to live a life that isn't their own and heavily resent their parents from their dreams. Don't want to be a doctor, engineer, lawyer, etc. Okay, I'll support you in whatever you want to be in life. Yeah, I feel like this is fair, but this always comes with caveats, right? Like, I would say I can imagine as a parent, I'm going to want my kid to pursue 
what they're good at and what they're passionate about and what is positive. I feel like too many parents are like, no, I want my kid to be happy and just make all the decisions. And I'm like, well, what if your kid wants to be like this? Like that's clearly just not a practical thing to become. You know what I mean? So I feel like in my opinion, be happy, but with kind of limitations. I think like information and wisdom is going to be a big part of that, right? Like, and I think as parents and as, and people you surround yourself with when you're making these career decisions or decisions as far as going to school, what you're going to study, you just have to be around wisdom. You got to be around information, right? You just got to make those better informed decisions. This guy said, I will admit my mistakes and apologize to my kid when I do wrong and not let my pride as a parent or elder get in the way. Obviously, they're indicating that they were raised without their parents uh, right. apologizing for mistakes. Sure. Yeah, I do think uh, apologizing the right way and acknowledging when you are a parent and you're wrong to your kid can actually go a long way. It actually can build respect. I agree. She also said, uh, my kid will learn about her heritage through the lens of good as well as the bad, and she can choose as much or as little as she wants to embrace rather than getting preached heritage as all just good. I like Ooh, that. I like that. That's that, that interesting. That's interesting. All heritage is good. Uh, yeah, definitely some people are holding on to the old ways that their parents and grandparents do things, even when it's probably not a good idea. Right. Yeah. This uh, Filipino-American mom said, uh, for me, money and prestige of work will just be a bonus for her, like cherry on the top, you know, toppings on top of the ice cream, not required. I just want her to be happy, strong, and safe. Mm. I can feel that, though. Yeah. I can feel that, though. Man, it's so tough to even say that, though. Like, I almost feel like it's like Asian parents would be like, I want them to feel happy, strong, and safe. But I still want them to be accomplished. Wait, because, you know, they're so, like, beaten into you over so many. I, like, I got to ask, yeah. amongst us, do you guys feel at all a little bit of that feeling where you, even though we're American, it's like, nah, I'm not going to just let my kid do whatever they want. Like I'm gonna still have because well, you don't want the apple to roll too far from the tree. Yeah, from yeah, your yeah, right. You feel it, right? Yeah, yeah. You still want to. Yeah, yeah. You, you. I still feel like in my head, at least, that I'm gonna be a little strict. I, I, that's how I, I imagine think that we have this desire to be excellent, and that's not a bad trait. But the question is, how are you gonna make that happen, right? And I think we all know too. There's ways we need to fix the previous generation's parenting methods, but there's also, you know, letting a kid do whatever they want is not gonna work either. They yeah. can't be parented by an iPad, right? And they can't be parented. You can't just leave it up to the school system either. That's that's right. a huge disadvantage. Yeah, no, I mean, it's like saying you're a basketball coach and you're training your kids too hard. The The right method is not to just train them too soft right. immediately, right? Like you yeah. can't just oscillate between uh, two extremes on a pendulum yeah, scale. that's a good way to put it. We all still imagine our kids to be excellent. That's a good point. Um, somebody said, I'm a parent and I'm open, realistic with my kids about the world around them. I'm Vietnamese and my mom never talked about sex, relationships, romantic friends or work, feelings, self-worth or social expectations with me. It was always do your schoolwork and that's it. I encourage my kids to explore, try new things, build relationships with the people around them and that success and happiness come in many different forms. And other people were agreeing with them saying that, man, dating and sex is the number one thing that's most awkward for my Indian parents. And I just feel like, this person was saying that Hinduism created the Karma Sutra, but then British people made uh, Indians feel bad about it. And now it's one of the most sex negative cultures, switching over from one of the most sex positive cultures due to colonialism and all this stuff. I was like, oh, interesting. Very yeah. interesting Whoa. stuff. I didn't know yeah. about all that, but it makes yeah, I sense. See, I can see that, yeah. So I guess, um, yeah, how about, what about dating and uh, like people really hate that a lot of Asian cultures, whether it was through ancient culture, the tumultuous recent wars or cultural turmoil, or it was just the experience of needing to survive in the West. They were very, very non-coaching about sex and relationships. I just think it's, it's there, there is like a, a thin line between when's the right time to talk about those things. But at the same time, I think parents, it, it's like, I don't know. I, I grew up without any type of sex ed, especially with my parents. I think they felt too awkward. And I think there was a lot of shame involved. And I don't think it was their fault. I think that's just how they grew up. But on the other hand, I don't know. I might be basically the equivalent of a real control that's wrapped up in saran wrap. I mean, it's it's like I feel like a, personally I've been a late bloomer in a lot of ways. Um, but I think a lot of that's because my parents didn't broach those topics and I had to like learn it through other means, mm -hmm. right? And I just think, you know, I just think our parents maybe just didn't have that themselves. And yeah. Yeah, this girl said that the advice she got from her mom when she said that she was having a hard time dating was, well, you're fat and you don't work at McKinsey. That's why nobody wants yeah, you. Yo! Uh, 
Terrible. That is horribly funny, though. That is hilarious. That is terrible. hilarious. I'm sorry. I feel bad for them, and the mom that's shouldn't terrible. have done that, but that's funny. Um, somebody said, fighting and sneaking to pay the check at a restaurant. I would like to effing relax and enjoy my meal. Thanks. Not constantly be waiting for the opportunity to slip the waiter my credit card. And then I got to keep track over months and however long I had who paid last time. F that. Just split the dang check or take turns. All they right. hate fighting for the bill. But I thought they're. Why is he saying take turns? I mean, he's, <laughs> how how do we feel about? Do we go to split Man, the check, I, Nelson? When you're with nah, your friends, I I per, I would prefer to preserve that aspect of of Asian culture. Um, I think that if you were to look at it from the lens of generosity, but once again, you have to be on the same page with your friends. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's always gonna you're gonna start resenting. You're going to start No, the system's issues. going to break down. I, I, yeah. I, I so I think, think communication's a big deal with this. I, I think it has to do with how big the bill is. If, if the bill is like 30, 40 bucks a person, it's, I feel right. like it's not, yeah. don't even track well, it. Well, here. Also, but yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, big things yeah, where yeah. people was ordering King Louis and all this stuff. Yeah. Definitely be splitting that. No, because no, that's it also crazy depends so on how many people. What's the, I, I would say the unwritten rule is like, if you took them out and I, and let's say Nelson, like mm. I needed help from you for something. You're my right. friend, but I did want your like, help mm -hmm. with something and yeah. I it's just yo can I take you to lunch yeah. obviously that's going to be on me it matters what right. industry you're in right yeah because it, if you're all like uh small business guys you there may be goodwill aspects exactly right? mm -hmm. I think that uh people who deal in the business world whether it's corporate business or owning your own business you understand the idea of networking with a meal yeah. and all this stuff and it's not because you're always trying to squeeze something out of a yeah, friend but, but yeah always. it's just it's just a nice thing to do. It's kind of yeah. like, hey, I'll see you again, right? You got me next time. Cool. But I, yeah, I agree, man. I think like those aspects of respect and those aspects of generosity, once again, with the right intention, those are really good traits. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether that's like, you know, growing up, going to a family members or uh, a relative's home, you know, greeting mm. everybody, calling them aunt and uncle, right? And and, and, and saying goodbye to yeah, everybody. Yeah, saying goodbye to everyone and saying, you know, mom on sick and all this kind of stuff, all the, all the, the trite sayings, but those things are actually good. I feel like- Wait, Do you still, you say maman sick? Like, like do, slow down, I, don't I, eat too fast. I do with my aunts and uncles, if I remember but, to. But not, you. if we were eating together. No, but I would say though, I would definitely be conscientious of things like your table manners and you're conscientious of, of hosting and having that mentality. But I, I have to check that myself sometimes. You know, thinking about, I got invited to a friend's house for a dinner party. I'm not gonna come empty handed. And the reason why I think that is a lot of people come in now with an entitlement or they've lost that aspect of, of um, hospitality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good point, too. Yeah. I think that, man, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want my kids to say have to say goodbye to all the elders and relatives and uncles in each one. Yeah, but I'm like, why not? It is, but it's like it kind of makes us who we are, too, and it yeah. makes us different. From, I guess, a baseline Hollywood American yeah. TV family or like high schoolers or whatever. And I don't know. Part of me thinks that a lot of these people, Andrew, are just vocalizing this thing because they were unhappy with their childhood. Don't oh, blame yeah. it on the fact that you had to say bye to everybody. But I could see if you didn't like your uncle and your aunties and you didn't like how they was treating you or you whatever oh, the yeah. perception or the re versus the reality, then you would fault it. But I could see if you really loved your aunts and your uncles. Why wouldn't you well, want to yeah, respect agreed. them and greet, uh, say goodbye to them? Let me, let, me, let me bring up this point, though. Um, I do think, though, the the lost art of generosity and that lost art of treating people, that lost art of, of hosting, whether it's hosting your own home. If we think about our previous generations, yeah, inflation aside, right? Man, those are costly. It's not just costly financially. I can't even imagine, you know, um, some of the bills my uncles and aunts and my dad and whatever my grandparents like picked up like they they had to be you know if you're gonna pay the bill of a 20 person dim sum or, or a formal dinner i mean that's got to be in the thousands at times right and so like that's a and when you look back sometimes you're like man i'm actually that age when those aunts and uncles were treating or covering these bills um and they did it without complaint and they did it without they did it without any sort of second thought and I think it's like, it's not just costly. And then when you're hosting dinner parties at home or you're hosting family, it's it's also um, costly as far as effort, right? And and like, in just in terms of time, effort, ex right. and those things, that, that those, yeah, those are and, really but, good qualities. But, but you know, at the same time, like you said, there's also a unwritten responsibility of the host to do a good job. You have things for your guests. You're yeah. going to, you're going to treat them. You have food for them. You can't, Hey guys, I'm hosting a dinner party. I have like two entrees yeah. and not enough so food. And sometimes there's, 
you're judged on that performance. Exactly. Or you're judged on how generous of a host you are. But I don't even think this whole thing is necessarily Asian culture. No. Hosting dinners, that's like, I feel like the way we host dinners or you would imagine it in the West is based off of like how Western people should right. host dinners. Yeah. Technically. But I'm just I still think it. it's driven by different motivations. Out of yeah. It. Like, yeah. like the outcomes may be the same, but the... the is, is different. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Um, this person was saying that, um, you know, they always got compared to some kids growing up, and they never felt like they could achieve it. And th their their friend's daughter Diana was so smart. She went to an Ivy League school, became a doctor. But guess what? Now Diana doesn't even talk to her parents anymore. And me and my brother weren't the highest achievers, but we take care of my dad because my dad came across a health issue, and now he's so grateful for us because we're in his life. And even though Diana became a doctor and went to an Ivy League school, she's not even in her parents' life anymore because how hard they pushed her and prodded right. her. She has resentment for them. So she goes, so how, do, uh, how does my parents feel about that now? Because I'm taking care of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. I mean, it's it's a funny way to justify and rationalize, like, I get, I don't want to say underachievement, but not achieving as well. I get it, though. Because you know what? it's different, right? Life can go so many different ways, and I don't think all parents are the same. And obviously, one parent really, really wanted a certain life for their kid and pushed them to the point of resentment. Mm -hmm. And one parent was a little bit more chill and created happy, helpful, loving kids. And that is... That's how it's probably going to go. If you made me say probability wise, that makes sense. Right. Um, somebody said having my the culture tradition of having my dad name our kids. I'm not letting my dad name our kids. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I think one way around this is like, at least in Chinese culture, it's like the, 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 the grandfather could do like, or the dad could do the, the Chinese names, yes. but not the English name yeah. and not make the English name a Chinese name. Cause you're right. That, that might complicate somebody's upbringing. Yeah. I agree. I would have my dad come up with the Chinese name for sure, which he, he is doing for our, our nephews. Yeah. I mean, this one was just talking about how Asian societies are so unforgiving towards mistakes. One minor mistake at home or work and you get yelled at the shaming, um, all the academic achievements, all the times I got yelled at for not being able to do math workbooks at the highest level or like not giving, giving like getting A's and stuff like that and being made f like feel uh, very small yeah. or very like mm -hmm. low for something that other kids would get praised for. Oh yeah. You know, you get a B plus. Why did you get a B? Right. Your, your white classmates, hey, we're going to get an ice cream cake because you got a B plus. Like, it is different, right? When you see that yeah, and you're yeah. just like, you're like, some it breaks some kids, right? I got to say for Asian Americans, man, the big advantage that we have is that we have choices to make. And it's like, hey, we get to be a little strict and carry over a little bit of that shaming that we went through. But we're going to have the eyes and the vision to see when it's really breaking our kid down. Right. When yeah. our parents didn't really have those goggles on, yeah. they didn't have the night vision to see what was going on. We're going to have the better vision. So if you want to be strict, you at least equipped with that EQ to scan your kid and be like, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, I'm reaching my limit right now with my kid. Yeah. I should tone it down for him. Wow. Versus yeah. we didn't have that. There was just toppling on top, on top, on top. You know, that, that, that stereotypical push for Asian parents to put their kids through music and like, Piano classes yeah, and lessons yeah. and all. These what's your stand, things, What's yes. your stance on all that? I, because it's very expensive. Man, I don't like it just because I just think it's outmoded. You know, a lot of Victorian era, like French Marie Antoinette things or Britishy things from right. the fencing and things like mm -hmm. that, equestrian. I, I get why, because especially if you're from Hong Kong or, you know, a, a former colony that had yeah. a lot of contact a lot of with the West, yeah. with a lot of elite Western people in the 18 or 1900s, you're so impacted by that. Uh, but I, I don't like it. I would be curious if parents these days should, instead of put those funds into, instead of music tutoring, if that's not going to be their profession in the future, or if it's not going to build a, any type of learning skills into i don't know coding classes yeah. or like something practical down the line i don't know but that's yeah. still pretty asian the coding i, I don't, don't know, know. yeah it's, sure it's, it's it a is. good skill if your kid has right a love for it all kids should learn to code at at least a probably two or three out of ten level because it's a modern skill set but yeah i mean i just think it just depends on um what world yeah. you want yeah. to yeah. Yeah. i'm not into the cello and no. all the classical i culture. would say it was weird for parents who didn't even have a lot of money to spend the money on 
a musical class for their kid right. for several years when you don't even want that kid to go professionally. Right. That's what I'm saying. That curious. is yes. weird. That's a it's weird ironic. investment. I get why, because the parents usually grow up thinking that classical music is the top tier music, right? It's not pop music. It's not rock music. It's classical music. The kid will learn a lot of things. I'm like, you're better off putting them into tennis or golf if you want them to benefit their careers, right? So that right. they can network. Or they can go to golf. Or, or, they, or they might go the, pro. You never yeah. know. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, and it's like, but how, going pro in an instrument is like not like, yeah. like it's one, very, very five percent make like a living. Very rare. Yeah, yeah very Especially rare. Especially in how sports centric America is versus like, America's yeah. whole thing was rebelling against those Victorian cultures yeah. that the British and the French had. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. but it's almost like Asian parents, because they so tapped into old school Beethoven culture, they right. like trying to go back to it, but America was trying to go I, against it. I definitely it. think a lot of it is posturing among the families and my kid is this level in yeah. piano and this and that. But I just think it's one, it's super costly. It's super time consuming. There's probably a lot of commuting. Like, it's a labor of love, and I just think it's outmoded. Um, somebody said, you know, for me, I was so unhappy with my upbringing being the firstborn child in America. I'm purposely choosing to not have kids at all, <laughs> and I'm choosing to end my stem of the bloodline with me. Bruh. Dang, he didn't say, yo, I'm going to let Asian traditions die. I'm just going to let my bloodline die. <laughs> I feel bad for that, man. I feel bad for that, but that's a real situation. I know some people yeah. who feel actually the same way too of course it's a variance right somebody said uh, filial piety is only as good as the capability of your elders if your elders are incapable then why do they deserve any filial piety someone said victimhood there's a lot of unintended victimhood in a lot of asians in the older generation even those from the homelands um failure is a shortcut to success but a lot of people have a fear of failure but you need to fail up that's yeah. a very western concept mm -hmm. eastern people don't necessarily mm -hmm. understand failing up right. and just do what brings you peace be around people who bring you peace somebody said i'm strictly avoiding seed oils if my family refuses to keep cooking with seed oils then i'm oh, then i'm out very specific no. <laughs> somebody said uh i don't like being overly su superstitious i don't see what's so bad about sticking your chopsticks in your rice that you hit your kid over it also why op is opening an umbrella indoors worth screaming at a kid for obviously i'm assuming this mm. person got hit for sticking their chopsticks in their bowl of rice. Probably. If you got hit for opening an umbrella indoors, other than spraying water everywhere if it was wet, yeah, I don't, I that, that I, that's a rough child. I don't think you should stick the chopsticks in the rice though. I, it just looks uncouth. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. <laughs> I would say, hey, if you ever got smacked for sticking yeah. your chopsticks in a rice and it's supposed to look like intense, that's, yeah. you know, that's make like, sure to like and comment on this video. That's like putting that. your shoes on in the house. You know what I mean? It like, is. Cause I don't even, not the cause, same cause as I, putting the shoes I, I, on. Yeah, I don't even, yeah, yeah. Shoes I just are dirty. don't. I don't like it. I don't like to let the. I don't know. For me, I'm against it. I'm. I'm with the old ways. Yeah, that's I just the think one traditional thing. It might thing not be David's necessarily keeping. just superstition. I think a lot of that's just also being respectful. No, it is weird. It's stick not it like in your food. No, you don't do that with steak. You don't stick a fork in the steak. Yeah. Yeah, hey, man, the steak. Look at the steak. The density of the steak is allowing the yeah. fork to stay vertical. <laughs> um, that's a good Somebody voice, just said, focus on, on practicality over happiness. I don't like it. And not being friends with the kids. I want to be friends with my kids. And somebody just said, you know what I hated growing up, especially amongst nouveau rich Indians and likely other Asians. They will spend a lot of money on a big house and a fancy car, but then still be cutting corners on other aspects of their spending. And I always hated that. And that bothered me because you're only worrying about the statusy things and cutting corners on other aspects of life that make life unfun or unjoyful. Mm. That's um, super relatable, by the way. Yeah, that is. That is. I've definitely seen it. I'm not saying it's 100 out of 100 Asian families. Ultimately, what do you think? What Any any of these that really stuck yeah, with you? Or? You know, I think like, I think this might be another video, but I think the filial piety and, you know, hey, if that's something, you know, if you have a relative or father or whatever that doesn't deserve that, why give it? I think respect and I think filial piety in a lot of ways, I, I just think it's, it's, it's tainted by a lot of misogyny and tainted by a lot of things that are bad with, with the Asian culture. But I feel like it is our job to be self-aware. And I think it's our job to, to chat about this and have conversations like we're having right now and pick and choose what you want to bring on to the next generation. So I think this is such a great topic and I think we should dive into it more. But I, I mean, everything from when I, when I look at it, the things that kind of come down to respect, respect for our culture, respect for our history, yet and have a level head around like what's practical. Those are the things that I want to keep uh, and keep going with. Yeah, I agree. I guess my major takeaway is like, as much as you think about what you want to delete, think about what you want to add in there in that void. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Cause you can't, you can't just be like always 
hate and everything, but it, it is better to spend three, four times the amount of energy studying families, whether that's documentaries or good parenting workshops or classes. Like as much as it is important to delete these things out of your memory or remember that you're repelled by them, you really got to study families that you do like. And that's one thing I learned. Yeah, I think, good. to be honest, I think Jewish Americans do a really great job of uh, encouraging their kids to chase success without being too authoritarian about it. Mm. More authoritative. Guiding them. Mm -hmm. Lighting the fire within instead of sticking the fire on the butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Let us know what you think about all these Asian traditions. What are some Asian traditions that you would let die, that you're going to drop, that you're not going to carry on? Um, so let us know in the comments down below. Shout out to Nelson. Check out his links down below. And check out Smala Sauce at smalasauce.com from Sichuan to Sicily. Could be a new family Asian tradition that you want to keep. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.